Hi there, I'm Axel Wilkinson, here to discuss one of HitFilm's most powerful features, the ability to combine 2D and 3D layers into a single composite. As you know, HitFilm offers you a 3D compositing environment, and of course it also allows you to work with 2D layers, but what if you wanted to combine layers of both types into a single composite? Well, we can do that too. First, let's make sure we understand 2D and 3D layers individually. 2D layers act like a stack of paper in front of the lens. When you look down at the stack, you can only see the top piece, which is how HitFilm sees your 2D layers. But if the top piece is smaller than the rest, or if you cut parts of it away, then you will reveal the layers below. The order of the layer stack is controlled entirely by the timeline. Whichever layer is highest on the timeline will be highest in the viewer as well. 3D layers can be positioned in 3D space and moved around in relation to each other however you desire. Each object can be moved in three dimensions. It can be rotated. It can be positioned closer to or farther from other objects in the scene. With 3D layers, the timeline still contains a list of the layers, but does not control their positions relative to each other or to the camera. The timing of the layers is still controlled on the timeline, but their position is not. So if I select this purple plane, which is in the front of our composition, and is at the top of the layer list, I can drag that all the way to the bottom of the list, and the position of the layers relative to each other does not change. So with 3D layers, their position within 3D space here is controlled completely separately from the order of the layers on the timeline. Except, when you have multiple 3D objects occupying the exact same 3D space, for example, if you have several 3D planes in the exact same position, then only the layer which is highest on the timeline will be displayed. So for example, if I select this blue plane and I adjust its transform properties so that it's in the exact same position as the red plane, okay, right now the blue plane is being displayed in front of the red because the blue plane is higher on in this list on the timeline. But if I drag this to below the red plane, now the red plane, because it's higher on the timeline, gets displayed in front. So that's the one exception. If you have multiple 3D layers in the exact same position, then whichever one is highest on the timeline will be displayed in front. 2D layers and 3D layers. You shouldn't view either of these options as inherently better than the other. They both have advantages, and each will work better in certain instances. 2D composites are generally faster and simpler to set up, but some scenes can only be done in 3D. And so in those cases, having 3D capabilities is hugely useful. So, to combine both types of layers, we need to be working in a 3D composite, because without a camera, we can't see any 3D layers at all. So for all of our 3D layers, everything will still work in the exact same way as always. What we need to understand, then, is how 2D layers will fit into this 3D structure. And it's not really that complex. 2D layers can either go in front of or behind any 3D layer. So if we select this blue plane, and I'm going to open the transform controls, you can see here the position of this plane right now is 0, 500, 400. And the 400 indicates that it's moved forward 400 pixels toward the camera from the red center line. So if I convert this to a 2D plane, of course the z-axis is no longer present because we don't have that depth to adjust in 3D. And so all we have is 0 and 500. So since that y value is the same, it's still 500, why did the plane move? Well, because since it's now a 2D layer, these values are calculated not based on the center of the 3D environment, but on the center of the frame. So now the anchor point of our blue plane here is 500 pixels above the center of the frame. So if we zero that out, now that plane is centered within our frame. And that, no matter how we move the 3D environment behind it, that blue plane is not going to be affected at all. So at present, this blue plane is in front of the green plane and the red plane, and it is behind the purple plane. Now, as we saw earlier, changing the order of the 3D planes, these three planes are still in 3D, 
and we can change the order of them and it doesn't affect their position relative to each other. But because this blue plane is now 2D, its position in relation to the other layers is now controlled entirely by its order on the timeline. So if we drag this so that it's down below the red plane, now all of the other planes are in front of the blue. But if we now drag the purple plane down below the blue, even though in 3D space the purple plane is in front, it's going to display behind our 2D layer because now the purple plane is below the blue plane on the timeline. It defies the laws of space and time, but it doesn't phase hit film, which can display that uh, exactly as you want it to. So hopefully this gives you a clearer understanding of how 2D and 3D layers can be used together in your hit film composites. And we look forward to seeing how you apply these techniques in your future projects. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time.